Hi, I'm Kevin Cronin, Cleveland attorney, and I have greetings for the Western Cuyahoga Audubon Society. Uh, I had a chance to review some things and write, and I think I shared some of those with you, but I might recap them fairly quickly as well. Uh, essentially, the lawsuit is just a challenge to the icebreaker plan and says that what's been done has been deficient. Uh, that they haven't done the, that the agencies didn't do the research and didn't do the testing to, and didn't produce the data to justify what they're trying to do. And those challenges are common, but uh, it's important that it's being done. So I applaud the group for that sort of activity. Uh, the essentially are challenging three different laws that they're that, uh, under three different laws. The first is the uh, NEPA, the environmental, the main uh, environmental law for America, and it's, uh, that's one that requires agencies to do testing and do evaluation on major projects. Those could be highway projects, those could be uh, energy pipeline projects. In this case, it would be a wind turbine uh, network of six turbines out on Lake Erie. Uh, the second issue is the Clean Water Act, and that's the one that protects the uh, water uh, and promotes obviously clean water and protects against uh, discharge and there are probably several levels of discharge that could happen with this project. One is that uh, it's an electronic, you know, it's a mechanical piece that requires oil and grease and things like that and there's been accusations that they can tend to leak. I uh, don't know about it on this project and whether they have the assurances that it won't but that obviously is always a problem. The second is that it's going to be digging up an awful lot of ground in order to run power from the turbines to the shore and into the energy uh, plant itself. Now that's disturbing an awful lot of sediment. We don't know what's in that sediment. Uh, there have been accusations that it includes uh, dumping from the uh, dredging of the Cuyahoga River which could involve uh, uh, hazardous metals, chromium, lead, things like that. Uh, but uh, you know it's those are things that have been out there for you know, decades, so we really don't have a good idea or grasp. Uh, and, and certainly that was not a subject of the investigation by the agencies, so that would be a claim that something was missing. The third claim is the Administrative Procedure Act, and that's really a, a fallback uh, law to try and see, and it really assure uh, the real goal of APA, the Administrative Procedure Act, is to see that uh, the law is faithfully followed that they're not doing things that Congress did prohibited and that they're doing things that Congress recommended. So uh, it's uh, a less, it's a weaker law in terms of environment, but it really is a kind of a procedural one and one that probably uh, is a little more uh, uh, easily enforced here. Um, so those, that's the, the basic uh, agree argument is that quite frankly, the agencies just did not do their homework, did not do a, did, uh, the rigorous job that's expected. Uh, and, and in part because this is a demonstration project where you're not just talking about six turbines on the lake, uh, you're setting the ground rules for evaluation for as many as 1,500 turbines out there. And uh, the first one will be uh, providing some guidance as they go forward, so you want to make sure they're doing a good job on that first one. That's the state of it. So I applaud that there is a lawsuit filed on this sort of thing. Uh, and we'll just have to see where it all goes. Um, you know, I, I was an early supporter of the uh, the testing, working as a volunteer on Green Energy Ohio, uh, and and frankly was very supportive of the project. Um, but the agency's uh, Department of Energy needs to do its homework and uh, to be able to fully evaluate it. Uh, otherwise, the public is left in the dark, and that's one of the hallmarks of the environmental laws is they want the public to be involved and knowing and and they, these sort of decisions are based on open and honest process. Uh, well, one obvious question now is what is, when does, how does this all end? And that's a very good question. Uh, it, will end, it will end in court. <laughs> uh, what basically is the status is when people have disputes, they go to federal court and try and ask them to solve these things. And that's essentially where you're at right now, is the court case has been filed like, uh, logging those three arguments that we reviewed. Uh, and uh, the court may make a ruling that it, at some point to say that uh, the Department of Energy didn't do its homework and we need to start over. Uh, the lead co, the people who are uh, uh, developing the wind turbine project, have argued that they are blameless, that they are the ones that have met every obligation uh, that they've been asked. So they, it really is kind of in the Department of Energy's 
court at this point to, uh, whether their conduct was deficient in doing a fairly weak environmental review called an environmental assessment rather than what's called a uh, environmental impact study, which is a much more strenuous sort of process. Uh, so the court case would go forward. Uh, if the agency is ordered to start over, then there will be public hearings and there will be public processes, uh, probably a hearing in, in Ohio to try and gauge where people can contribute and can speak up. Uh, letter writing is, can be helpful at that stage too. There is another proceeding that, that is going on here in Ohio though as well that you should be aware of and that's called the Ohio Power Siting Board that reviews uh, energy uh, projects and where they are being developed and deployed. And uh, Icebreaker, the wind, pro wind uh, turbine project, has an application that's pending and has been favorably reviewed by the staff of the Power Siting Board. And, but it, and it's on the agenda, but there is no date set for a review. And apparently the uh, Power Siting Board is in negotiations with uh, other people about, uh, with environmental interest about how that goes forward, and I have no insight about that at some point. But at some point, the Power Siting Board will also issue a, uh, have a hearing, and that might involve uh, public participation and letting people know that uh, they believe that the Icebreaker Project uh, is deficient and, uh, and let them know why and how. So the process is just beginning to start while it seems like it's been going on forever. The review is just, re there, there, is, there are critical steps ahead, and uh, uh, we'll just have to get through those critical steps before we have any sort of concrete final determination. I know that uh, the icebreaker people have been convinced that uh, this is right and uh, the right thing for Northeast Ohio, uh, but then there's the argument about going uh, slowing down to make sure you have a more thorough review. As I said, this is a 60 old, six uh, wind turbine project but it's on the way to 1500. So uh, those, the, sc the scale and the lessons about approving a six turbine project need to be very carefully taken.